We can be partners. You might try to kill me. I'm not gonna kill you. I said you'd try. In the 1990s, video game movies were starting to come out and everyone seemed to have a low opinion of them. Only Paul W.S. Anderson's version of Mortal Kombat seemed to get a lot of popular attention, while others that we've talked about before in the past, like Super Mario Bros. the movie, did not fare too well at all. In 1996, the world of 3D gaming was starting to take over, and one of the biggest stars of that transition into the next generation was Lara Croft, with her massively successful Tomb Raider series getting loads of fans. Tomb Raider would make a new game for 1996, 1997, 1998, 99, and 2000 every single year before finally making the leap to the big screen in 2001. And since the first three of those legendarily cool video games are about to get a remaster, I thought it would be fun to take a look at the first film in the series to see how it holds up. And wow, this thing guys, well, I have a lot to say. Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, is a 2001 action-adventure movie directed by Simon West. It stars Angelina Jolie, her real-life father, John Voight, Daniel Craig, and Ian Glenn. The story centers around an artifact that is wanted by the Illuminati, believe it or not. Two pieces that, when put together, form a triangle that just may have something to do with a crashed meteorite that, when all of the elements of the plot are put together, will be important for a planetary alignment that only happens once every 5,000 years years, and expert treasure hunters are after it in the same vein as Raiders of the Lost Ark, only this time updated with an over-the-top and silly action-adventure contemporary kind of way. Now look guys, if there's one video game franchise that I think is uber cool, besides Resident Evil, of course you already know, that has to be Tomb Raider. I can remember going to those little kiosks at a Walmart and playing something like uh, The Last Revelation on PS1 back in the day, and the whole vibe and feel of who Lara Croft was and what she brought to the world of video games was extremely of its time in the coolest way imaginable. I know it's kind of hard for some people to really relate to the kind of environment that the late 90s and early 2000s were because because a lot of younger audiences and gamers have no context to really put it in. They were born too late. Lara Croft was Indiana Jones and James Bond all rolled up into one, and she was in a series of games that got dark and sometimes really scary, depending on what was going on with the plot. But it was all done still while being rated T for teen and really edgy and cool. People don't remember it, but this was just how cool stuff was back then, on a more personal level, even down to Michael Crichton calling the disease that kills all of the dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park Islands DS. That was like a very 90s title. Look back at the Attitude Era for the WWF, and Triple H and Shawn Michaels had their own DX title spray painted on t-shirts for the Degeneration X stable, and look, they even used some footage of the people running from the T-Rex in San Diego from the Lost World Jurassic Park for their intro. Well, you better get ready. Sonic the Hedgehog, Crash Bandicoot, The X-Files. This was a time of edgy, extreme attitude, and Lara Croft was a part of the cool stuff that that era was all about, and she is translated, I'd argue, perfectly in this movie. Right on target. Thank you, boys. Over and out. So who is she anyway? Well, Lara Croft is an adventurer that's something of a high-flying expert of treasure hunting with a boatload of money to pretty much do whatever she wants. But she's also someone with a personal side of humanity when it gets revealed that a certain relic that goes back to her deceased father may be of interest to a new adventure that she chooses to embark on. Her dad, by the way, he's played really well by John Voight in a role that it knocks his performance as Paul Cerrone from Anaconda out of the water. I'll say that. Waiting for tonight. Now look guys, I love the first Tomb Raider movie. True, it is not what you would call high art, and in fact, it's actually rated negatively by most critics, and honestly, their critiques make sense. This is a film that is nonsensical and silly in a lot of respects, and sometimes the plot, it just makes zero sense.
But at the same time, it's done so well, and there is so much going on here that it's hard to really swing at with a bat, you know, against the movie without completely missing the point. You know it's bad in the modern day when even what was gauged as lower-tiered cinema from yesterday is deemed excellent in comparison, but hey, that's kind of just how it's been going. Roger Ebert gave the film three out of four stars with a quote saying, Lara Croft Tomb Raider elevates goofiness to an art form. Here is a movie so monumentally silly, yet so wonderful to look at that only a churl could find fault. I mean, I'm not looking for realism when I go to Lara Croft Tomb Raider. I'm looking for gargantuan, implausible, peculiar weirdness. So when she's jumping around on these bungee cords yeah. and, and doing battle with, great with robots oh, that exist for no reason yeah. whatsoever, or when these intruders come in and all they all really had to do was just get to this one thing, but they have these pointless <laughs> action scenes set to a rock and roll soundtrack, you're defending all that, yeah. right? I'm going to get that I am. straight. I defended okay. it, and I liked it, I was grinning all the way through it. Now it's time to talk about Angelina Jolie herself. She does an incredible job in this film. Her dedication to the character goes a very long way and almost in the same way that I think Danny DeVito was born to play the role of the Penguin in Batman Returns. Angelina is perfectly cast and her portrayal of Lara is excellent from the costume design down to her mannerisms and even the imitation of the video game voice where she discovers something. It's all done very well and she's not just playing the role well, like she's literally being Lara in the film. Jolie did most of her stunts so well that they didn't even need to use the stunt doubles. When she's in the middle of action scenes, she is really doing a lot of that stuff. And it's, it kind of blew my mind to know that because the, the set designers have created these monumentally beautiful pieces of art that Lara is meant to jump around on and bounce off of while punching and kicking bad guys or shooting her guns just like the video games. And it all comes together as one of the most well done action adventure products of its time. Full stop. I'm not even playing around. Now the way the plot unfolds is rather silly, with lots of exotic locations giving way to kind of outrageous convenience, but that's the thing about Lara Croft Tomb Raider, this is a movie that is made to be outrageously fun and cool, and dude, I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't accomplishing any of that. Everything sort of feels like a combination of the first three games, only the bigger plot itself seems to focus on the meteorite plot from Tomb Raider 3, which we're going to be playing a cool remake of soon on February 14th, Lara Croft's in Canada and birthday, by the way. Speaking of which, another focus in the film is this massive action set piece where Lara is relaxing by bungee jumping around her manor from the ceiling and a bunch of mercenaries bust in to kill her. This little sequence feels like it was lifted from the end of Tomb Raider 2 where the Italian mob boss guys show up at Croft Manor at the end of the game and Angelina Jolie is just knocking it out of the park here. She is physically, she really did this. She's really jumping and punching and doing all kinds of great stuff in a sequence that feels so outrageously late 90s, early 2000s fun and cool that it's hard to not just smile and cheer at how awesome it, all this stuff is. Angelina Jolie. Time to save the universe? Absolutely. Daniel Craig does a good job here as Alex. Uh, a few years before, he would become James Bond, by the way, and the villain of the film is really good. He plays exactly the kind of baddie you'd want him to be, and the whole Illuminati plot, it works really well for the time. The sets in this movie are impressively giant, and the scope of action that takes place in them is all background to the super cool character that Lara Croft is. This movie was produced by someone like Colin Wilson, who you may recall also worked on War of the Worlds, Terminator 3, John Carter and the Lost World Jurassic Park. It's no wonder his work always leads to this level of cool action and adventure stuff. And the director, Simon West, obviously has a fun resume in and of itself, having made such movies as Con Air, The Expendables 2, and who could forget his iconic work on the Never Gonna Give You Up music video? No, that is not a joke. We know the game and we're I love this movie, and it's a good old-fashioned action film that I think more people should see because it's the kind of thing that I think really shows how hard work pays off when everything just lines up the way it should. Lara Croft Tomb Raider is an outrageously entertaining movie filled with high-level performance, with physical stunt work, cool special effects, and a tone that replicates the games to a very fun level while also elevating everything to a cool popcorn movie feel. Towards the end of the film, Angelina Jolie and John Voight have to act with 
one another in a particular scene that accomplished more than I thought it ever could or should in a movie like this. And I know that may have something to do with the fact that these two people are actually father and daughter in real life. But wow, man, this is this. It isn't what I'd call the most excellent piece of filmmaking in existence, but it's still so good to just see this story of two family members that genuinely love each other reach out across literal time to meet again after death. It's not a five star classic. It just works, though. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I recently watched this video that dived into how music and film could point to the existence of God when it conveys emotion or just focuses on something of a higher meaning, like good versus evil in its human story. Of course, the focus would obviously be more on the objectivity of beauty when it came to film soundtracks and music compositions like Beethoven or Bach, but make no mistake, man, and yes, I'm gonna say this, I think you can look at all of the hard work that went into a product like a Tomb Raider and just from the set design to the act the special effects work, and the general exotic beauty of what's filmed and printed in the movie. I don't believe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I believe that's a lie from the pit of hell. This film just gets a sense of admiration for the kind of things that are kind of able to be made from an artistically good standpoint. I've been vocal about being a Christian, of course, and I don't mind saying that. Of course, Tomb Raider gets a little crude with Lara Croft taking a shower and stuff. Hey, man, it ain't perfect as a movie, by the way, either. It's not The Godfather, you know, but what is it? It's Lara Croft Tomb Raider, and it's kind of impressive how something like this is so outrageously amazing in some respects. This is good filmmaking. It really is. I thought I'd add that in there just to see how you all may feel about it. But anyways, guys, these are all just my own thoughts on the film. What do you personally think? And what are your thoughts on the Tomb Raider series in general? This is a brand that I think is kind of impressive in a lot of respects, and the quality of the first movie may not be the greatest thing ever made, but it still represents a forgotten time where things just seem to be more organically ordered when compared to the chaos that is today's cultural landscape. Look, hard work does pay off. Angelina Jolie, she was great as Lara Croft Tomb Raider, and the movie made me smile and is beautiful to look at. But hey, I've said enough. Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be on this movie, I'd love to hear all about them, especially the video games, guys. Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me tell you something, brother. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you can be updated when I put out new videos. God bless you all. Christ is King. I hope you all enjoyed your time. And as always, take it easy.